All right. You said, Tracy. Okay. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, today is the Wednesday, January 15th, meeting, regular meeting of the Public Arts Commission. Um, in, at a new time, I might note. Um, so, Jay, would you call the roll, please? <clears throat> yes, Commissioner Murray, uh, shown as not having arrived yet. Uh, Commissioner Gladstone, same. Commissioner Yanni, we know, is uh, out of the country. Commissioner Pritchard? Here. Commissioner, uh, Vice Chair Merrigan? Here. And Chair Shefford? Here. Okay. Um, what I would like to do is um, jump directly to public comments. Um, so this is the time that has been set aside for members of the public to address the Public Arts Commission on items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Public Arts Commission and agenda items if the member of the public cannot be present later in the meeting at the time each item is heard by the Commission. Additionally, members of the public may address the Commission on each item listed on the posted agenda at the time each item is heard. Uh, testimony for public hearings will only be taken at the time of the hearing. Any person who wishes to speak at a public hearing may do so when the public hearing is called. Oh, good, okay. Um, although the Public Arts Commission values your comments pursuant to the Brown Act, it generally cannot take any action on items not listed on the posted agenda. Five minutes is assigned for each speaker. So unless we have a, a member of the public who'd like to make general comments, we'll move on to the meeting because we now have a quorum. Let the minutes show that. Um, but we do want to hear from <clears throat> members of the public at various points. Okay, um, may I have a motion to accept the agenda? I'll make a motion to accept the agenda. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Okay. Um, now, we have minutes from the regular meeting on December 12th. Um, we, I hope everyone's just taken a <clears throat> glance at it. Um, I think that the important part is that any action items are clearly in here. I think sometimes the comments, when you look at them two months later, are less important. So I think that we are. Madam Chair, Commissioner Yanni indicated the adjournment date was incorrect, and it shows <clears throat> adjourning to a regular meeting on December 15th. That should be January, January 15th. 15th. Correct. All the way from France, he read yes, the he minutes. Very good. good, thank you. Um, with that change, um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Um, I just have a small uh, oh, note yeah. on the, just the absences section that perhaps we can update the fiscal year right. range to reflect uh, FY I think that's 18 true. It to should, 2021 or something like right. that. Right, it should be um, from June 2019 to June 2020. Um, because yes, it, some of this depends on how long someone's been on the commission. So, um, and the the last time we brought the <coughs> absences up to date appears to be in 2018, 19. So, <clears throat> okay. Good and I just like to say that I I thought the notes were actually very very nice, narratively written, and uh, so thank you. Which is really quite amazing <clears throat> since someone has to take them off the yeah. tape. <laughs> so that just shows everyone speaking up, which we, <laughs> we need to do, and spelling their names. Okay. Um, may I have a motion to accept the minutes from December 12th? Make a motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Um, we have no presentation scheduled. Um, the only thing I'd like to report um, as chair is that we've set in motion interviews to appoint a, a new commissioner for the vacancy um, from Melanie Brenner's re resignation. Um, and 
I've asked if we could do it <clears throat> sometime in January so that the city council at their first meeting in February or at the first meeting in February could approve the nomination because then we would have this person for our next meeting, which is February 19th. So we'll keep pushing. Um, and I know some people on the commission have recruited applicants, um, which is good because the city council, when they announced some new procedures for commissions, said that they would like to see more recruitment so that we get a good diversity of candidates um, for the commission. So keep, keep mentioning it to people. I, the deadline will probably be um, the end of this week or early next week. But we did put it on social media, so I don't know if we got anybody from there. Did we get our, our liaison? Did they decide who's going they to They decided not to have liaisons. Um, <laughs> they and they decided that they would not have specific uh, council members who would interview for a specific commission. So for example, it was Mayor Moon and J.R. Roberts, and they did all the interviews for our commission. And now what they've decided is that two council members will do this round of applications for whatever commissions need an appointment so that they, can, they will know who's applying for all the commissions and that perhaps there's someone who is interested in more than one or could indicate some preference and so they would meet all the all the applicants. We'll see how that works. As far as liaisons, um, they left it up in the air how they would communicate with commissions, but they did acknowledge that many commissions felt that they were not being listened to or they didn't have any way to get an issue to the council before it was a vote which is probably what liaison should have done. So um, I have to tell you, we had to stay up till like 10.30 to find this out. It was the last thing on the agenda, but that's what they did. And they, the council did approve the Gerald Clark project at their meeting. Um, and I don't know if we've had a meeting since they approved the two murals at the cultural center, but not only are the murals almost done, but it looks like we've gotten them a check. Yes? Well, <clears throat> it's in the My mail. My understanding is that it would have it was mailed as of last Thursday. Okay. So hopefully they've received it. Do you remember now. if it was for the full amount? <clears throat> full amount. Good. Yeah. Because the Cultural Center has done a wonderful job of getting the insurance and the lift, and the whole thing has gone very smoothly once we got past the hurdle of having another group manage a project because to do to pay individual artists and their insurance and whatever by the city is just it's it's very complicated so okay um, now the way our um, agenda is set up was that we were, were going to discuss a lot of things that came out of our study session on January 7th. However, since the one thing that is going to hopefully turn into an action item is the mini grant program, um, if no one objects, I'd like to put that on the, the first part of our discussion because Denise Goolsby is here and can we can give her some of the thoughts. So if that's all right, Denise, why don't you come up and sit here. Um, and okay, I, I'm afraid you have to spell your name anyway for the lady with the minutes. Denise Goolsby, D E N I S E, Goolsby, G O O L S B Y. I'm the Office of Neighborhoods Manager for the city. Great, thank you. Um, who would like to summarize where we left the idea of mini grants? Do you want to get on? Do we have the? Do you want me to uh, kind of go by what I sent you? 
Um, if you could just jump to that, the part about mini grants, and then we'll oh, try right to right. fill in, okay? Um, so this is what, if you look at this paper. Um, oh, it's number three. Okay. So from our public, um, from our study session, um, we've now evolved into this idea of art is everywhere. We've been trying to um, open ourselves up to greater diversity of artists. And I think we've been doing a really great job over the past year. And now this is one more step further into open, into um, a lot of outreach into the community. So Mara is working on um, a call for this project and is going to share the info with us over the next week or so. We're all going to give some feedback so we can prepare um, a call for entry for this mini grant, mini grant proposal. So we'd like to give $50,000 or budget $50,000 for the year and give one grant per council district to kind of celebrate our new um, more city widespread diverse council. Um, and so we would look at two grant proposals from each council district and then we're also talking about adding uh, the business district, but maybe if it's not just downtown, one, right. yeah, like so we we uh, we take care of the entire city. So it's not just a downtown business business district. It could be a, an association. It could be the chamber even or so. I think so. They, they represent. And, and if I can add, so part of the idea of d doing this mini grant program. Well, there are two two goals. One is to sort of model uh, a call for proposals and see if you know it could be something that um, we can do in a sort of a bigger way with larger funding in the future. Uh, two is to um, engage with the neighborhoods that we think, um, although we're very proud of the work we've done, uh, the council's done, uh, we acknowledge that a lot of the projects have been cited downtown and we really want to address um, having artworks um, you know, in all of Palm Springs. And um, finally, to um, really uh, have more of a communication with the residents here uh, in the city. Oh, and the last piece is um, is that because we've had some trouble, um, or not trouble, but just a lot of, it takes a long time to sort of get the funds to the artists to do the projects. We thought by working with the community groups, we would have um, a little more flexibility in how quickly these projects can move forward. Exactly, and I should note that for the Gerald Clark project, I think one commissioner went to at least, at least one commissioner went to every meeting of a neighborhood group where there's going to be one of these signs. Um, but again, that's very labor intensive uh, and sometimes hard to, you know, the timing of the so. meetings, et cetera. So again, if we could go through 1PS and present this mini grant proposal to everyone, um, do you think that we could then, would you be able to um, basically transfer funds from our budget to uh, whatever groups were selected? As long as David Reddy approves. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be great. I think you probably should make a um, presentation to the 1PS uh, monthly meeting. It's the second Thursday of the month from 8 to 10, and I can get you on the agenda. I've already spoken to the 1PS chair, Kathy Cohn, and she's very um, excited about this project. Well, and by then we would want to have like a brochure so that cool. it's not just sort of a, an idea, but how it would work. But you do give like mini grants to various... We've given grants in the past. I haven't given grants specifically, but I think this is be a great project. Um, and as an example of, I think, uh, the great possibilities, I went yesterday to um, the Desert Highlands community group um, meeting and oh, was talking about the Gerald Clark project, but then someone said, hey, we've got a wall that 
we'd really love to see something on. And it's that specific kind of knowledge of the neighborhoods that's really that we, you know, we only know our neighborhoods that we live in. in. So already, I mean, I think there's a lot of um, potential and possibility to really be um, giving communities um, the, the projects that they want to see. So, Absolutely, like yeah. the Baroni Park project by the fire station, that's really cool. And I think that neighbors are really open to that and being included, and it's nice that you guys are outreaching and, and doing this now, so it's well, a fun project. We, we've tried a bunch of things, murals, um, the benches. Um, benches there's right, been, yeah. I noticed that um, Tyson Knight is working with the um, Chula Vista um, Charter School painting trash cans. and. Yeah. You know, on Facebook at least, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of people who've said, couldn't you do trash cans? Couldn't you do, you know, other ugly pieces of, of sort of furniture in the, in the city? And since the parks have so many possibilities where things could go, um, and I think our idea is that an art installation can actually include an event where people get to participate in it. I mean, it's like sort of a communal project. Um, so, but and it doesn't what, have to be a park. It could be, right. you know, maybe people think their fire house in their neighborhood, or their, you know, some community space. Or you know, we want it. We want it to be a wide idea of. Right, and we we just don't want to go around the city plunking down right. pieces of art because. <laughs> Uh, and and we have heard requests for things, so we just need to um, give a good description of um, the kinds of projects that would be okay. Um, secondly, I think we'll want some kind of commitment from the organization, sort of either just managing it and perhaps keeping an eye on whether it needs maintenance. Let's say it's a bench. Um, someone who lives in that neighborhood is in a much better position to see if it right. something needs touching up um, or um, you know volunteer uh, volunteers if there's something where this project would benefit from a number of people painting or working on it or something but a, a commitment to do it and I think you know we'd like to see our funds go mostly to the artist who is doing the work, which means that the kind of support needs to come from the community. Does anyone have anything else they want to make sure is a yeah, part, part of what we were talking about is that if it's not funds from the community, it's either labor, you know, labor or management of the project. Also, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Denise, uh, hopefully you would invite us when you have a celebration. Of course. <laughs> uh, but uh, from an administrative uh, point of view, um, w what do we need from city council? Uh, there's something about many grants that just yells out to me, city council <clears throat> well, approval or We, what, we what? actually have it as an action item to create this program. Yes and ask the city council for approval of the full budget okay. uh, with the you know, clear understanding that it would be doled out in many grants. Thank you. Um, but I think it's important that they know about it ahead of time. We also talked about trying to get at least one in every council district, because this is the first time we have council districts. Um, and we have had a lot of interest from downtown groups because we've done some of these pilot projects there. Yeah. So I think we can consider them to be another district. Uh, they are, they're sort of a business district. Um, and in each case, obviously these groups don't have um, staff or, or permanent um, administration. So it would really be a question of one volunteer being willing to, to sort of manage the project. Yeah, I'm sure we can get so, uh, a number of volunteers from each of the districts. And I've actually broken down the districts into what neighborhoods are in oh, them. Great. If you'd like that, I can send oh, it to you. Oh, that would be great. Some are overlapping, so it's kind of, but it gives you an idea. Yeah. That's what I was wondering, if some overlap. Yeah, I, I there's about five or six that overlap. So we kind of said that if you, so if you get one of our grants, right, 
so if we gave two per district, and then we'd have to kind of look at these overlapping, uh, overlapping ones, then you wouldn't be able to apply for another one until we kind of went through a round of other neighborhoods that were interested, so we could. Um, and would these districts, uh, like the, the group that would get together, would they decide on what art they would like to have, and they'd come before you and say, what do you think, or they, how would the process go? I think that we would try to put together a, a jury, a committee. a committee, that had someone from the neighborhood group, someone from the commission, and, um, you know. Maybe other stakeholders. We'd have to figure out a, a number right. of the committee mm -hmm. and what stakeholders. Okay. But, we, um, we kind of anticipate that the proposals, although we'll have clear criteria, but some proposals might need more involvement from okay. commissioners. Um, you know, maybe they're able to identify an area that needs beautification, but they don't know the artists or something. So I think right. we would, you know, I think we would have a lot of conversations. It's in like that a collaboration process. then. Yeah, yes, okay. exactly. Cool. Yeah, so and some we're, need more hand holding. We're, right. we're trying to work on a a database of artists um, on our website that you could look up and see what kinds of murals or um, benches or whatever an artist has either done or is proposing to do, and we'll try to match people up. I mean, That's it's great. but we we just really don't want to make all the decisions without the people who live in the neighborhood. Um, do we have? I don't know if we discussed this before. Any idea of? the range of amounts for the mini grants and also because it's been an issue before somewhat of a standard rate for an artist because there's been some artists who've complained that it's you know and we keep saying well that was a really big wall um, but it's not it would be better to have some range everything doesn't have to be exactly the same but so that people don't feel that because their projects in the North End, you know, we're not going to pay. Maybe as we much. come up with a standard fee for a mini grant. So the artist's fee for this mini grant is this much, and then I think we we can compile some comparatives um, from our own contracting as well as some like other publicly accessible information about those kinds of projects. But I do think just because this is, um, I, I think we should keep the grants. You know, under like seven thousand dollars, really, you know, around five thousand dollars, which seems kind of reasonable and uh, for um, for the kind of small scale projects we're thinking about. We're well, not I, thinking I think about building like large if <laughs> monumental we did, sculptures. And, <laughs> if we had right a max, maximum of five thousand dollars, we could do ten of them for the neighborhoods um, for fifty thousand dollars, and then I'd like to suggest that we add ten thousand dollars to it for a downtown district or doesn't even have to be downtown yeah, but like there are two business districts right ones. there are business districts mm -hmm. uptown downtown um, sunny dunes just a lot of places that have enough of a cohesive group that they could do it Ma so, madam chair just one yeah. more administrative question um, uh, just for the record uh, in that we we've covered all the all the bases uh, would nonprofits in the community be able to apply for these grants? Those with 501c3s. That's <coughs> interesting. Some of the neighborhoods are 501c4s, nonprofits that are registered. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would depend on is it a nonprofit that only does stuff in one neighborhood, or is it a nonprofit? That counts as a in, as a business business district one. That's an interesting problem. We are not authorized to make grants to nonprofits or anyone else, and by going through one PS, which has a working relationship with all these neighborhood groups, and has the ability to give a, these small sums of money. Um, but if we had um, if if we had to open it up to all nonprofits, first of all, I think it gets away from the point of the neighborhoods, yeah. right? And well, plus, we're also not um, now. If one of these, we're just if, covering all the bases yeah, in discussion. Right. Mm -hmm. That's all. No, and I think no, that's a that's a good of, so. question. Um, but I, th I think for this stage of what we're looking at now, to do the neighborhood focused 
grant program just to <coughs> keep it streamlined as that because we realize it's sort of a win-win situation for everyone the council members serve their neighborhood by supporting the neighborhood and what they want in their community and then we facilitate if necessary connection with the artist to do the project the scope of the project set the limit of five thousand dollars per grant program it just keeps it an easier more streamlined do process. we want to ask that um the council member from that district sign off on the application or be or part of be the part selection of the just but maybe just sign off to say that they've seen it <clears throat> that um that the group went and talked to their council person the count the uh, districts are so new i'm not sure how every how and the council members feel about their more if they have the time or want to but right is, yeah there should certainly be a part of the it. process so, well and so it's it certainly will help next year trying to get the funding if <laughs> if all the council members had seen some part of it yeah, yeah i think it's a win that's a win-win. Yep. What's your timeline look like? You're going to go to council with this first for approval? Right, as a concept okay. and with these general guidelines. Um, and then the next meeting of 1PS is February 20? Second Thursday? Second Thursday, February 13th. Okay. Um, we could make it a goal to have at least, a, a if, if not an application form, at least the criteria. Yeah, and I think we had, yeah, that, that's possible. And I think we had also discussed um, maybe like a rolling deadline or like two deadlines so that, you know, sort of anticipating that usually people will hear about it kind of a little too late and that at least it allows us to, um, you know, sort of field more more um, applications and in a see few what months, we're getting. See what kinds of things mm -hmm. we're getting and how we can adjust our communication and, you know, so maybe April 1st for projects to be done in April, May, and June, um, and then maybe June for projects to be done over the summer, which I think in parks may be even a better time to do it. More people available, more kids available. Um, but I let's have say a little- for projects to be done by then? And that seems like a really tight timeline. But I think we should have a rolling timeline to be able to start selecting. Pieces. Okay. Luckily, our budget rolls over. Yeah. So it, it, we don't have to have spent a certain amount of money by June 30th. We're trying, we had a show, we're trying to schedule our public art show for June. So then we would feature these in that show at the art museum. Great. So maybe we should just have this first round is in time to be selected by June and then the whole summer to do it. Mm -hmm. And then open it up again. And then in the fall we, yeah, could, yes. we could open it up again. And we could also really do a good post-mortem on, yeah, on how it works. Yeah, whatever fixes we need to do. So do we have enough of a little working group to have a presentation for 1PS that you know, sort of has these, what will be the deadlines and the criteria, and and then I think we need a short application form. Sorry, right. when is that? What next one? PS meeting? Uh, it's Thursday, February thirteenth, and it starts at eight o'clock in the morning. It goes <laughs> till ten. Um, but I can get you on the agenda right now if you'd like to go, and I'll I'll talk to the one PS chair. And Do you think put you that's? Um, I mean, we could have a one page thing and not the application. Yeah. And then maybe give ourselves another month to have an application. Yeah, just talk about the concept. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we can definitely do a, a proposal. And I've yeah. seen, um, I've seen a couple of um, mini grant application forms from other cities that, um, and we were going to all sort of pool our um, resources on a, a Google. Um, yeah, Maura's working on that. Yeah, so if, you've, if you know of another city that's done this, and a lot of cities do it very successfully, I think. Uh, but I think that the downtown groups who, for example, love the benches will be pleased to be considered as another um, 
So, any other questions that anybody has for this? Um, Who, we have a little working group, right? You and Mara and anybody else yes, want to? I'm happy to assist. Okay. So I'll I'll send like a draft of what I have Friday or Monday to mm -hmm. the working group, and then we can okay. like debrief in the next. And week. I think if you put it on Google Docs, it's fine to share this background information it's not yeah Jay said that was okay. yeah it's not as though we're talking about us you know business, business I have just one comment I was thinking about when I was applying for the when I had that interview because you keep mentioning yeah it. and this is one of the things that I said at that interview was I didn't think that the public art in Palm Springs was even known about the public or even reached the public and the public should be much more involved so I'm so excited thinking back upon this this past uh, few days when we've been doing the class. Um, so that's very, very exciting. Okay. You guys kicked it around that idea yeah. a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, right? right. And this will be great because it'll kind of engage the community and it, uh, educate people about what's out there in the art world. So, yeah, well, maybe and you know, help them win. know how hard it is too, and like how much is involved. Also. Yeah, right. Yeah. It has been an interesting year <laughs> yeah. too. Um, but last year, when you had the big national convention, mm -hmm. um, several arts commissioners got involved, and I think that's when we really realized that this was the group to get to throughout the city. I mean, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, um, right? And yeah, and we have good communication. I have, you know, I have, next door I have my uh, report that goes out every uh, every yes. week. And, and you're very nice. You put us on it. We're, Absolutely, we're very you're so nice <laughs> to want to be on it. <laughs> oh, I'd love to be on that actually. Oh, you, you want can to? ask to get it, but oh, she okay, also puts great. our meetings. Oh, awesome. On yeah. It. yeah, Denise um, puts my stuff for Desert Hort too. Yes. That's right. Yeah, gets awesome. a word done. No, no this is great. exciting because when you start talking about, it, I'm like, I've been thinking about it for a while, and it's like this is great. And like I said, the One PS chair is really excited, and I think it'll be just a great way to bring all of us more That's together. Great. Yeah. And why don't we include Denise in these when we're working it up, just in case she sees something that that would work better a different way? Yeah, that would be great. Cool. Great. You thank might, you very much. Can you stay for this part? Because this yeah. kind of includes sure. uh, what we're talking about. Okay. Um, would we like to approve going to council with this? Um, I would like to make it sixty thousand. Um, we have to ask them over twenty five thousand anyway. Um, but not until we have this one page description of it. So when's their next meeting? Um, they now meet um, the second, no, the first and, no, second and fourth Thursdays. Yes, they took ours. Um, we obviously can't do it by the 30th, but how about we aim for the first meeting in February, which is actually about the same day as the the 1 PS meeting. Oh, yes, yes, second Thursday, right now. But it might be moving to, because we're trying to push everything tonight, it might be moving to Tuesday. So I know, and we have to debate that afterwards. Yes. Um, OK, would someone like to make a motion that we? Can we try to do it at the next meeting? Because otherwise, it's going to kind of slip. We could. I mean, yeah. I think we, we have the outline. What we really want is the go-ahead to launch this program and spend up to $60,000. And how many communities will that cover, 60000 It will be twelve, two, 12. up to two grants in each of five districts mm -hmm. and two grants for business organizations, business right. districts. That's what it works. Thank you. So we're doing 60 rather than 50. Um, That's what I would like so. to suggest so that we can do the business ones without um, taking away from the neighborhoods. That's a good uh, idea. And um, I'll write up what to send to council and I'll send it around also. But what we want is we want, we have to ask them for approval of the money, mm -hmm. but we want really sort of the go ahead to do this. Right, so we, we need to do this as a motion and a vote? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I'd like to make a motion that we recommend to City Council approval of the mini grant program and allocate $60,000 from a public arts fund for the mini grant program implementation. 
I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. Unanimous. Okay. Great. Um, so I think we're set on that. Let's go back to the rest of the things, the rest of the discussion about um, what came out of the study session. And very last thing before we leave, we're going to talk about how late we have to hold our meetings. So um, should we go from, you want to go from your outline? Sure. Can we do the artist registry yes. just so Denise idea, sees right. it? Okay. And um, Sarah, do you want to? We, we met on Friday and kind of brainstormed how to do this, Sarah, Madalena, and I. Um, and I think it will be really easy. It, can, it will be very um, easy to market to the, to the public, uh, very inclusive, and I think it will streamline our workload and make our... Um, be able to keep a much easier file of what people are looking for or people that are reaching out to us. Okay. Um, so we came up with the idea to have the home page um, with three tabs that people can check into so it's very clear um, what is going on for people that come on. Um, there's the artist registry where um, we have here that this is where people could. Um, could you turn know. your mic on? Oh, oh turn your mic on. Oh. Could you okay. start from the beginning? Oh, okay. So um, we came up with uh, this is the homepage, what this site would look like. The site would serve as a place where people could sign up and get more information about the mini grants or about any call for entries, and also a place where they could connect with the Arts Commission and the city to upload a profile in um, the artist registry section. Um, then the middle one is call for artists. This would be any of our um, call for entry projects or RFPs. And then the public art request um, would be our community partners that um, maybe are looking for certain type of art projects or um, you know opportunities that people might have. And, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, great. Oh, so. okay. Um, this is uh, what uh, Madalena created, which is kind of just <coughs> like overall idea of what it would look like. This is a plugin on WordPress, so it would um, look pretty close to this with each artist's different photo, and then people could go in and search for, you know, whatever they're looking for, different types of art. And that's another example of what the profile would look like once you click into the artist. And uh, this is just an example. If you were to click on the, um, what was it called? The uh, call for the Yeah, call. the call for entry section. It would just be a direct link to the, the call for entry page where people could go on and it's very clear as to what we're looking for, what the project is and the outline and all that. Do you think that we should keep using the um, call for entry program. I think I think it worked. It was an easy way. It's also easy for jurors if you know if you guys want to use outside jurors to come in and use it. It was a way for everyone to access it. The artists, uh, jurors. So it, we got the bang for the buck too in that it mm -hmm. was really they really promoted. That's mm -hmm. true. They've two outside of Palm Springs. Yeah, right. and it was it had you know a few hiccups, but overall it it was really helpful. Mm -hmm. well, I think really, that really we, the fact that we had eighty some odd. Yeah, we um, just have to submissions for our first yeah, try. Was, awesome. was plus mm -hmm. our marketing, plus their marketing. Mm -hmm. We learned lessons from it. Like you know, we really have to tell people you can only. You know, you can't do more than one profile. You can only upload a certain amount of Im images. But other than that, it worked great. And the other thing is it's um, it's produced by a nonprofit foundation called the Western, Western Arts Foundation, I think. Um, and so they don't charge artists. You don't have to charge artists to submit something. And they don't charge us. They charge us something for the year. Um, so... It's nice. I mean, because it, a lot of calls for entry, you have to pay something to 
submit your work. And then right. as an artist in there, you do keep getting um, calls from them that you can participate in. So whatever categories that you put in your artist profile, you'll get calls from Call for Entry. Uh, so your your profile lasts much lo lasts longer than just the one call. And you can also send an email to any subgroup, like if you want to say thank you for your application, but we don't mm -hmm. have anything at the moment or whatever. It's very easy to just do it to everybody who applied for this thing. So, right. But we do need so, to get more people to look at our website to find this. And yeah, I'm just, so just to clarify, so what you're saying is that you have this beautiful website, but the calls will link to a different website. Right, the call, we the call did, website. We did that last year. Because it's set up to do okay. this. Yeah, we did right. that last year also. But you can put anything you want on it. I mean, any sort of... Um, of um, guidelines or anything um, mm -hmm. and what's nice is that you can have let's say there's a committee of three people to go through these applications for a first cut you can have um, everyone can jury it online and then you get the results of it so so the artist registry would be a long living registry so it wouldn't be specific per project is that the last slide? I, yeah. It is? Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Uh, I don't know why I'm on the administrative thing today. <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> but uh, yeah. um, as a former administrator uh, in a past life. And an uh, artist. And an artist, yes. Uh, do we need a disclaimer of sorts? Yeah, I think definitely, especially in the artist registry, that's something that we were talking about a lot, that, you know, we would put, this is where you can sign up to maybe get some exposure to, you know, so the Arts Commission could, you know, maybe find someone new that's not in any kind of circle, but it's not going to guarantee you any kind of project. It's just a way to kind of right. put it out right. there. To protect the city. Right. To protect, well, to protect us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> misunderstandings, and we learned a lot last time. Mm -hmm. um, so, so if you go back, Jay, maybe one, or if you go back to the to the one before that. So, anyone, the public would be able to search the artistry. So when when you filled out your form, you know you would, you know whatever details you wanted to share. Uh, we'll have to figure out what that form will be, what, you know, you can select a certain number of mediums, you can, we'd like you to do, um, write an artist statement of what you would like to do in the city, and then another s statement of your experience, et cetera. So we can figure out that form, and then the neighborhoods would be able to search, anybody would be able to search these artists. So one of the perks of being in this artistry or artist registry would be we would you know we would we would share some of your work on social media or you know we wouldn't make any promises but we would help these artists you know get the word out there about themselves um, and then under the public art requests that's where we would funnel the requests that come in to us kind of onesie twosie you know, people reach out, maybe they don't even send an email, then that would be a form that, that, that would be filled out and then it would be sent. It could be sent to Sarah and Jay or Ann or whoever, or all of us, but we'd be able to file all, those, all of those requests and then also help match up people with artists. And there may be, um, and that would be organizations private. that want to do something and pay for it themselves. Yeah, you know. So, but right. it would be nice to help them. So their info wouldn't be shared publicly. That would just be a form. We could download it as an Excel sheet, or it would come to us as a form, or both. But the artistry registry would be public, so people could uh, contact the artists and right. and ongoing. Yeah. Uh, to back up just a little bit, though, and Jay, this is where we need your help. Um, the page on the city website about the Arts Commission is way out of date um, and it it started out trying to have a picture of all the public art um, but it's it's hard to change the city website so I think what we would like to do is 
to say, in order to find more information, go to our website. Uh, you know, it's, these are things that don't have to do with if you're a developer or, you know, you need all of those forms on the city website. But if you're an artist who's interested, you need to get sent to this website. So if we could do one renewal of that page so that it doesn't try to have all the information that's way out of date, instead it keeps saying, go to this website. And the other thing that we would really use some help for, and I did ask Amy Blaisdell, and she has a lot of other things she's doing. Um, there are a Facebook page and an Instagram page that predate Madalena and are doing it, and it's called PS Public Art without the S. And it hasn't been touched for like three years, but many people end up there when they're looking for PS public arts. So someone in the city, probably Jennifer, set those up. So there has to be a way to just not have them because they're not the official them. ones anymore. Just kill them. Right. But I don't think you can kill somebody else's Facebook No, account. Jennifer or the city would have to do it. Yeah. Okay. So we would just like, you know, and... Nothing's been posted. They just, you know, it started out as um, it started out as trying to be the official Facebook page, which, like, the city has one, but um, it never went far enough to say, you know, to get permission to be the official page. And when we started with Madalena, we said right off the bat, this is an in unofficial source of information and again we want to send people to this because the only reason you have to go to the page on the city website is if you're a developer and you're wondering how to you know ask for a, a reimbursement find out our meetings right yeah, right our minutes are there our meetings but nothing else has been touched for about three years so we would like to just bring them up to date so if you can find out just how to cancel the other two, and don't cancel the wrong ones. Just, yeah. okay, well. It makes a, the website also, on the city website, makes us look very unorganized and like we're not doing anything. That's because nothing's been put on it for so Maybe if we could just time. delete a bunch of stuff off of it that's old. Well, I think the, the pictures of the art, because there's only about 20 of them, so that looks like all there is, um, and just keep saying that, and they're horrible pictures. Anyway. And I do think that we should have available on our website, for example, um, the report that Mara wrote up about where the Gerald Clark signs are going. Because if people had been able to go find that, it might have answered a lot of questions ahead of time. I mean, it, this is, if, you know, it's a public document. It was the list and the pictures of all the places. So for people who are worried that there will be snakes where the sign is or who are worried that, um, you know, are they spread all over this? Whatever. I mean, we got so many questions that would have been answered by reading the two-page mm -hmm. summary. So well, we, we put let's a lot try of, to put... Yeah, we put a lot of work into the website, so we really want to... Um, make it more robust with with information. Right. So if we all are working on projects and we want the public to know about them, we just send Madalena the info and she'll right. put it up there. And your so. social media is great, but it's you know you're limited to kind of this much um, attention that someone will pay. Well, um, the information part is especially important because we experience the same thing with the Tyson Knight Bench project. I mean, we all sort of knew what was going on, and the downtown merchants knew, but nobody else really did. Right, like so the city. The <laughs> like, how many are going to get it done? All that sort of stuff. Right. So, so in that respect, Russell, like since the website is very simple, like it's really picture dominated, mm -hmm. do you want to write up maybe like a a post project blurb so we can with some photos and we can add it to the website and just say you know this was a pilot project and well and blah, especially blah, blah. for these new murals again mm -hmm. you know a lot of people see the social media but not everybody 
and right. um, and we'll yeah. link it to all the social. Maybe, maybe media just too. a link to like current projects or something, and then it can become a. We keep getting so many questions about the benches, though. Well, about the what? Oh, about right. the benches. So, yeah. but I'm just saying, if there was like a air section, just current projects, mm -hmm. then there could be a blurb oh. about the. Yeah, and there could be a blurb right. about Gerald Clark. Yeah, and yeah. right. Blurb about. And the benches right. are basically a current project because mm -hmm. it's sort of an ongoing. It's this year, thing. and yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Mm -hmm. to Not see. stuff in the way past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, just like new the new things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, back, 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 Madam Chair. Back to the uh, disclaimer. Um, it, is there room for uh, the public arts, for example, mission statement? Just something to oh, think about. I think it's yeah, on we, the site. Yeah, we it's put it everywhere. Oh. But I think we could, you know, like in that menu section. Yes. On the it could be. Thank you. It's sort of called out that, yes. that which is good. And yeah. for the last three years, I've written a sort of year-end summary for the council, and I keep putting the mission statement in it. But um, could easily give that to Madalena, and it just says, you know, like this year we approved seven murals and we did three, and you know, just it's sort of a record of Thank you. what Thank we've you. been doing. And lastly, um, with this, uh, 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 I don't want to say this. What are we calling it? A registry? I'm sorry. Artist, Artist registry. registry. Mm -hmm. um, will there be any incentives? Uh, will there be any contest, uh, juried uh, kind of exhibits? Well, I mean, as an artist, what's what's my incentive other than you know? If that's well. Just there, just a question. There, just a question. There will be an exhibit. Mm -hmm. But I think we learned our lesson last yes, year yeah. by simply selecting projects that we thought were really worthwhile. Mm -hmm. um, that was where we got some artists who assumed that, that meant that we would do them well, all. So, I so, think so we're the open idea to behind online the exhibits. artist registry is mm -hmm. for for you to register yourself as okay. an artist okay. to get your to create. Um, a profile for yourself that says I am as an artist I'm open and ready to do public art in Palm Springs or, or in uh, the greater Coachella Valley if we do this we want to we want to prom we want to tell those artists that are uh, registering that we are going to promote this locally and uh, throughout the valley so there we are not making promises but we are the public is able to come to the site and search it I mean we did we got a really great response from 30 by 30 with our marketing so you know we want to replicate that and do better so the key word and is then, public art yeah and right. then okay. and then um, we will feature artists in our social media, but we won't make a promise that we will feature everybody. Is right. the intent for this artist registry to be focused on artists in the Coachella Valley or anywhere? We talked at the, when we were talking, um, I think anyone could register, but we will have a, a way that you can search by the local area, the little bit wider area, and then by um, s state. So you could. I mean, I would like to recommend we sort of think about limiting uh, the geographic scope of the registry just to start. Yeah, we could think about that. Just if we, as someone we, who we works at a museum, we get emails from people all over the world, and I just that are just literally sending their stuff to anyone who yeah, will take it. Yeah, so that's it, a great idea. Especially Why if we're we not it? charging to yeah, register. Yeah, if we limit it, and then if it's gangbusters, just, we can expand Maybe it. just even Southern California or something. It doesn't have to be specific to, but that there has to be like an address or some, you know, some kind of a... Right? Yeah, and then we were going to have them also pick, you, you would put Southwest a county, or, or you would do maybe, you know, low desert, high desert. Like, we'll get down to the nitty-gritty, but people have to know that they can find their someone county. locally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. However, for these mini-grants, I think that part of the mix is a neighborhood working with a Palm mm -hmm. Springs-based artist, mm -hmm. or at least not too far, maybe high desert. Local. but local. Right, local. Like Coachella Valley artists. Right, hopefully. because um, part of it is going to be the interaction and... You know, it's not buying a piece from them. It's creating a piece. So 
And this is also, I mean, just something we forget about. This is in this in the spirit of supporting our local artists. I think we should think about this mini grant program as a way to engage with yeah. area artists. Um, not that we ha we aren't doing that, but I think to define that is actually like we're not just here for the public, but we're also here for the artists who live and work mm -hmm. and make this community. Mm -hmm. So, and no, I think all of our pilot projects from the mural in the pit and the benches and everything else have been they're all really test testing out how this works um, and some of the best ones have been where you know the artist is there working and people come and engage with it and you know it's we are not very often buying a piece of art now that doesn't mean for example if the park designers ever you know sort of are at the point where they'd like to talk to us again if we wanted to have a, a call for a piece of art with a much, you know, perhaps the state, um, because it's it would be purchasing a piece of art and a, and installing it in a very public place, but short of that, I think we should try to work with local artists. So cool. Uh, um, so, what do you guys think? I think it's great. I and think I the think website looks really nice. Yeah. It's very logical. It, it, and um, I it's think, very clear. I so. think we want to, um, let's make a real effort and let's tell Madalena to keep after us to have as much information as we can on that site. And then let's work on getting the city site to say, you know, if you want information, go to this website, which is pspublicarts.com. I mean, it's. It's pretty <clears throat> simple. So That's do we great. have a consensus to move forward on this or? Works for me. Um, again, do you want to? Um, do we have to vote on it? No, I don't think we need to vote on it because it falls under what we're, we're already contracted with Sarah to do these kinds of projects. But I think it might not hurt to just write out the guidelines <clears throat> for yeah, like we'll get call. all of these things set right. and just run and them by we everybody. Will share them right, and just, then people can right just edit to see if will. some you know if if it's clear like if Al mm. thinks it's clear that we're not promising it you know no because we were writing notes on this on Friday but we don't have the whole all all of the text mm -hmm. so they'll start build she'll start building the forms and then we can ask for feedback. Yeah, it's just so if you send those to us. Periodically, we can digest it. Yeah, and give your feedback. Is there any the reason why line segments by Ryan Campbell is the, the uh, what do you call it? Why it's bigger than, I mean, the public arts emblem? Oh, no. she. I think Madalena just put that up to have like. This is just a demo. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't right. think that's make currently what's there. It? Yeah, I just asked her to make a demo for this meeting. Yeah, I see. Um, so it won't be that big. I can't think of the word. What is that called? Logo? No, the uh, text. Know. That's a name for it. I'm sorry. Let's see. But it just doesn't say public art to me. It says line segments by Ryan Campbell. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think this is not the real thing. I'm going to look and see what you do get when you... Font. That's the word I was looking for. Uh -huh. oh, no, not font. <laughs> not I think the website has a slideshow. Let's see. Uh, probably mm -hmm. rotates. Yeah, I think it does. Sure. Yes. Come on. Yes. But you know, public art. It just doesn't say public art. Mm -hmm. You know, it says. It should probably be right. Just right. It should be on the right hand side of the web page. Any text good, there. Yeah. I think it's great. Okay. Cool. Okay, and it actually still says it's the 30th anniversary, so this is a good chance to... Um, yeah, we've been talking about getting this up, updated and adding yeah, more content. Yeah, because it has um, so people will arts actually night at the there. museum so and stuff. Okay. Um, but she's putting more and more um, video and interviews, which are great. So, I think, you know, that should probably be our next thrust is to get that website. Um, I wrote question um does who pays uh t to main for the website and the address and like the 
cloud storage. I actually do because it's like <laughs> such a small amount that I mean I forget it was like thirty dollars a year or something to get the okay. Domain. So the domain. I'm just I'm just ask, I'm only asking because I anticipate with its great success the artist registry or the call for proposals may start to uh, build the amount of data that's being mm -hmm. stored and so that um, um, might I'll need check to upgrade on that um, <laughs> the and, and Madalena is the one who yeah okay. yeah and we'll deals limit the the like they'll have to send a you know we'll limit mm -hmm. the file size and everything and then so I guess it's, it's like purged or archived or yeah. something once. yeah like it okay. should be on a cloud then we'll have all of this on a cloud so everyone can yeah. access so we'll, it um, yeah. and when it comes up for renewal we can probably submit the bill to the city, but at the time it was like, you know, an idea. Um, so we we grabbed the domain name. We also have pspublicarts.org and .net, I think. Uh, so we can check through, since this is WordPress, what we bought for storage yeah. capacity also. Just ask Madeleine if she's. Yeah. But the thing is, um, <clears throat> as I just pulled it up on my phone, um, we have not paid a lot of attention to it. We've been more focused on the social media. But I think what the next push should be to get people on social media to look at this site, and it will have much more stuff and be up to date, because it is actually yeah, we, a year out of date. Yeah, because now we're we put that effort in, and it's an easy thing to keep updated. So yeah, that's very cool. Awesome. Um, uh, one so, last question: yeah. Will that change from time to time? My last question: The uh, yeah, it's just a demo. Yes, and yeah. not I mean, just yeah. that. So you'll have other public art. Oh yeah, right. And not just that. If you want to send, First you know, page. a picture, Madeline is very good about. Um, you know, if you ta oh, if you it. take a picture of a, a mural or something and send it to her, got it. she'll, got it. Got it. she'll Thank you. put Thank it up. Um, just to finish this section, we should just talk about the art show, um, which is a one of, a piece of this, and hopefully will be in um, June at the museum. Maybe Mara can help us get an answer. We asked. It's supposed to be. A, we had a date in April. But obviously that's too soon. And so I, we've written to Hillary to ask her if we could move it to mm -hmm. June. June in the edu art education space like last time. Mm -hmm. and we just haven't heard back. We might just. Would you mind um, sending me an email with sure. the exact date and then I can yeah. check in about that? Cool. Yeah, it's just uh, there's a lot going on, I know, and there's an opening and yeah, and our dates might. June's have always good. I would think so <laughs> at the museum. <laughs> okay. Then the well, only other thing. Oh, thank you, Denise. Can we just um, s agree to do the one PS picnic? Have a table there, public arts table. <laughs> Why don't you send it right to Tracy because she'll probably be there tabling. Um, I won't. I, I can't. I can't table that day. Hopefully, Sarah can table. Okay. And we'll, Thank um, you, Denise. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thanks. <laughs> we know this is not Jay's only commission, so we try. So not it's to. June. It's March. Um, <laughs> March. I would be there, it, but uh -huh. I have my so wild and twenty one or something. The twenty first. Yeah. It's a Saturday. So we have a banner. I <clears throat> wouldn't count on us having. They give us a table and chairs. They don't promise a pop up, and we have to create our materials for it. But we should have a lot of. We have materials already. We should have a lot of materials right. by then. I, that would be a great, if we have a deadline for something, it would be a good uh, goal date to sort of have materials ready for this call. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, because yeah. there will be people from the yeah. various communities there. It would there. be, like, have you, has anyone been to it before? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. But even having um, like a, like a card with like a go to link. Um, yeah. For, oh yeah, for the we project, should have it way like before that. Yeah. Really and I think yeah. um, 
it should be like a sort of a, a little brochure. It can either be a threefold or it could be a card, but it ought to have some good graphics and art on it for the art is everywhere. Now, I think we need to... Yeah, we're, work, the, we're gonna yeah. work on that. We've, we've um, had coloring books too uh, with public art. I don't know if we have any left. Yes, uh, um, I don't know that we do. For the kids. Right, we'll that's right, we did that and we did that in Victoria yeah, Park, I think. Yes. Yeah, that was for the, for the, some kind of, it was like a kid's spring right. break fest. It might have had something to do with the totem pole. And by the way, this is out of order. But it was very cute, actually, that coloring I, book. I got an email from Anne Rowe, who used to be the chair of the Arts Commission and who is the curator at Sunnylands, to say that members of the Hunt family were coming here on this um, Friday. June 29th. Oh for a family festivity, and they're very concerned that once again the totem pole has been damaged by sprinklers and now seems to have bugs in it. Um, and their preference from before was, could this original totem pole be put somewhere indoors and a replica made? I don't know if we can do that, but I would like to know if anyone from the commission would be willing to meet with them. They want to go over and see it. And let's figure out what, and I've also wrote, written to Arlene Amick, because I can't remember if it's on her list. I doubt it is, because she wouldn't try to clean their totem pole. But the process of getting it um, restored was great. I mean, they were there for a week. Everyone came and saw it and stuff. And it's just a shame that once again it's been allowed to you deteriorate. Know, so uh, we have Mike, to do something about it. We can't just ignore it. Um, you know, one thing we could think of, because Michael Hammond reached out to me about this two years ago, that there were bugs in it. And yeah. I, had, I had put that information forward. And he, since he was the f former director of the Agua Caliente Cultural Museum, maybe we should ask if he could help, um, like if he wanted to kind of get involved with thinking about a place and thinking about how to get it restored. And he has like a lot of expertise that in that. Um, He's fr he, he worked at museums up in the Northwest before he came down here. Right. Um, the, the issue is as far as you know, for example, could it go into the new cultural center is, of course, it's a tribe from Canada. Yeah, it's Northwest Coast Indian. Um, and, but um, we, we just have, we have to go one way or the other. Either it has to be restored once again, or it has to be retired um, and not sit out there in Victoria Park and everyone watch it disintegrate, including the family that created it. So, it, so you know, I, I am not an expert in Native American totem poles, but um, I do know that um, originally, you know, the totem pole is supposed to degrade back into the earth. That's about it being alive. And sometimes um, some cultures seeing the preservation of, of objects. <laughs> Um, actually, it kind of deadens, deadens them. I'm not saying that, you know, obviously the artists themselves have said we don't want to see it degrading, and that's very important. But, I mean, it's kind of interesting that these totem poles kind of seem to do okay in the Pacific Northwest and not not here. Um, I, don't, I don't recall what kind of wood this totem pole was made from. Yeah. But I guess this is to say, I'm not surprised it's not doing well. This is not like an art form that was like, ha has a life here. Um, yeah. So I guess, I think, I think this bears like sort of bigger inquiry into the nature of totem poles and reaching out to um, local um, experts here. But um, I don't know, it just, it, it yeah, I, in the spirit of the work, it seems it seems funny to create like another one, like out of metal or plastic or yeah, something, right. to something that would last. It. Um, but it might be better just find maybe a place where it's not as exposed to the elements, but can still exist. Right, and apparently outside. the sprinklers may be back on, which would be well, really that, a shame. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just, it's just yeah. um, it looks horrible where it is. No, it's a. It, this is really 
um, it's a problem. The, the mural at the James O. Jesse Highland Center is another question of something that is deteriorating, and the artist has said that he would prefer that it not be redone by someone else. Um, and at some point, the question is, has it degraded too much um, to keep it or not? But I have to tell you that um, you know, we've posted a lot of pictures of Arlene's work cleaning various um, of the sculptures. One of the first ones she did was um, the um, Kauia Indian women with the basket. And there's a picture of them cleaning it and then waxing it and stuff. And <clears throat> on Facebook, there's this diatribe from people like, how stupid they took the patina off this thing and it should be kept. And who's doing this, the tribe or the city or who's so stupid to do this? And finally, I had her explain on Facebook that they cleaned it and waxed it in order to preserve the patina. Um, and I do think they know what they're doing. But the point is that the, the public only sees, you know. Only, you only know what you know and right. how much you want to know. But this this totem pole, it, sit, it does sit there and look very shabby again. And I think, you know, we have to go one way or the other. Either we pay once again to have it restored, or we do move it somewhere. Um, if we restore, and we, I don't we think we should do a replica. I think yeah, we, we have to restore it, even if it moves, because it has live bugs in it. Yeah, lovely. I wonder how, I mean, we can also reach out to Sunnylands. I, I would think it would be good to reach out to Michael because he was interested in mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that would and be great if you could we could, could ask that. Sunnylands, too, like how, what kind of restoration they've needed to do to their hunt totem pole. Well, and luckily, Ann Rowe is, um, she was the chair when we fixed it and also is in charge of the totem pole at Sunnylands. But I think getting an opinion from, I mean, there's finding out what it would need to be restored, but then there's the question of, do we take it, you know, put it indoors somewhere, because this will just happen again if it stays where it is, and do, do we replace it with what? Can I make a recommendation that we maybe have a subcommittee on some conservation issues and also to just sort of get an update from um, the art or the collective, collective right. on what they're doing and to sort of do that? That would be great because yeah. Tom actually is the one who is it's supposed scary. to be the liaison, and I'm not quite sure when he's coming back. <laughs> he's, yeah, we should do that. Also, um, also, Madam Chair, when you get those kind of uh, responses, uh, you know, rather than not saying that it upsets you or anything like that, you know, just invite them, if I can make a suggestion, to come in and make public comments. That's what we have that for. So. It's a good idea. <laughs> it's easy to hide behind the computer that is screen. a very good idea. Okay, <laughs> and we're about comments. to get. <laughs> unless we you. have. <laughs> unless we have more. Sort of wrapping up of projects that are in process. Um, the other thing we do have to talk about is the council directive that all commissions meet in the evening after work hours. Um, we, we can start at 5.30, that's the earliest. That strikes me as a very awkward time to have a meeting because it's right in the middle of... What's the reasoning? That more people will be able to come. Um, and at the moment, only the city council meets in the evening. A couple of other commissions have already moved their... Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Um, have moved their meeting times. So, do we have to? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, however, it occurred to me that because of the nature of what we're doing and the fact that we don't have a lot of people who come to meetings, um, I thought maybe we could suggest that once a quarter we have an evening meeting and that any time it's a public hearing over a mural or something, that it be in the evening. But, um, or if, you know, if 
the consensus is that we can do it by meeting at 5.30. One of the things that's sort of difficult is that they lock up the building at um, 6. So how's the public going to come in? Uh, well, the, I mean, <clears throat> that's a good question. Theoretically, they'd be here before 6 at 5.30? <clears throat> but um, Jay was just telling me that a, at a commission meeting or a committee subcommittee meeting of the council that went till 7 p.m. the other night, um, several of the members of the committee got stuck in that atrium because you can't get out once they've locked so it. So you can't go to the bathroom. And you can't come back in. So there they were, stuck there. Um, it, it makes me uncomfortable to, to be the only ones in this building, really. I know that we're, you know, being recorded, et cetera, but. Um, I um. think we've been really open with the public, and we've had tons of public outreach meetings that we've had in various parts of the city. And, so we, I don't, and we just voted to move our meetings to three. Well, and we have more guests today, I think, than we've yeah. had in... And at four. So I oh, hope so we don't it, have to move our meeting to the evening. That if we if we started at say went to like four to six or something like that, that by overlapping into an evening hours that we would meet the requirements mm -hmm. of the city. That's a good idea. So I don't know. We but could do public comments at the end. Yeah, exactly. We could. Um, and that's what the city uh, council has done, with by public the way. Comments, um, because I'll, I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. The nature of our discussions often it's we're we're moving through sort of like minutia of um, of projects that we're. Part we're, of it's we the seem nature. to be more flexible also, than other commissions. Um, we also, um, as part of what we're doing in the year ahead, is a, with this mini grant program. I anticipate that like each of the commissioners will be like going regularly to community neighborhood groups very regularly. Um, I'm sure other commissioners also do that, but I just think we we are fairly public facing, so um, th that would be my input. I think that's that's true, I and think that's I think that um, we've had. Um, also good attendance uh, off-site, you know, maybe once every third meeting, or not even that many, at the museum, at the cultural center. Again, we had people at show up center. at the cultural center. At the art center, we used to have people show up. Um, and I, I, I don't actually mm -hmm. see that 5.30 or 6 o'clock is an easier time for people to get since it's dinner time and um, you know it, it's one thing when it's the city council and they're going to go from 6 to 10 uh, but they did push their public comment to the end um, unless it's about a specific agenda item so, so then could we propose then that we do we stay with our Wednesday meetings and make it 4 to 6 and have as they do public comment at the end of it or just be flexible with the public comment? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm willing to go back to them and say that. Um, yeah, because 4 p.m. in the afternoon, I think, is more agreeable to me than an evening meeting. <clears throat> and that works for you? Just, I don't know, it's hard just at the with, end of the afternoon. Just with child care, it's just better to um, be able to get home a little earlier. But yeah. that said, if we have to go to evening, we can find... Well, I think we should commit to um, always going to 5.30 so that if someone... And also, if someone would like to just tell Jay or someone that they would, they're would they planning to come, you know, as you say, we could be mm -hmm. flexible. Um, it seems like we're really flexible compared to other commission meetings that I've been to. So we, like... We like engage with the public, and we like comment back. Like all the other commissions, that you just go there, you say your two minutes, and then you're gone. So we we've been really interactive with everybody. So I'm totally willing to be flexible with that. But I think four to six is great. I think that's a great compromise. Okay, and quite frankly, having had to change our meeting day when that required a lot of adjustments from people. Um, because Wednesday night is a, actually a tough night. There's a lot of things. I have meetings on Wednesday nights already, so. I also find that the third 
Wednesday puts us awfully late into the mm. um, month. I mean, it's hard to mm -hmm. get something going for the next month. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, it, they, they gave us the third Wednesday because that had been a council night and they're not using it anymore. But maybe we could check and see if there are <coughs> other Wednesdays that don't conflict with someone using this room. <clears throat> but quite we, frankly, we it is check. a question whether anybody could, the council is one thing. I mean, the council chambers are open, everything's open. But for it, another commission, A lot of it it's, comes down to recording the meeting. We can only record one meeting at a time, so even if we're using another room, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we'd be um, probably limited to just recording it on the uh, microphone like we've done. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but um, just see if there's another <clears throat> Wednesday that is not taken right. by a, a meeting and that And this needs. was part of the selection to come to this third Wednesday is I believe we, those other Wednesdays were taken, but I will double check. Okay, just a double lot check. Of, Evenings were taken, um, so. But I, um, will you make our case that we are happy to extend past 5.30 and make it clear that we will be here for sure. public comments? But um, if we started at 6 and someone showed up late, I, I really don't see how they, I mean, we're not a big enough event. The, the council mm -hmm. is, the planning commission is, you know, there's lots of people but we could be sitting here, you know, locked in by ourselves. <laughs> well, I think we're just, we are really open to the public and we really engage. So we're already doing that. And so if we just move our meeting a little bit, that's, that's right. a really and good And we will practice. continue to go out to other mm -hmm. <clears throat> community centers or cultural centers, right. you know, let's say at least three times a year or four times a year, which does make it easy. I mean, a lot of people come to the museum because that's, you know, they know where it is more than they know where this conference room is. So, um, but I, I do understand they're wanting to have it after work hours so that people can more easily come. But we can just tell them that artists work strange hours. <laughs> well, they moved the 1 PS one and that started at 8. So you can go to that before you go to work. But now they move theirs to the evening also. They have to, I guess. <clears throat> All right, well, um, we'll see I if we'll... I also think we'll, by, we'll be creating this portal, um, which will allow people to submit um, um, requests for public art. So um, I think that as a, a sort of a public reaching platform as well um, should be noted. Um, and then that we're, we're trying to create different interfaces for interacting besides showing up at this one meeting, you know, every month. So, and, and there's also a space, so there's a space for artists to um, send us information as well as uh, neighborhood. Right, <coughs> and I think groups. that we should um, put on the city website and on our website at the very top our meeting time <coughs> and that, you know, we, we welcome public con comment, but it's best to you know, send an email to you if somebody's coming. And they, some people figure that out, you know, but <laughs> sometimes it's, I mean, we have been moving around a lot. So I think what we need to do is pass a motion um, requesting that the council allow us to move, to stay on the third Wednesday, <coughs> but, um, go from four to six, and publicize that um, public comment will be at at the end of the meeting if that suits so, you know if that's the only time someone can come. Um, do you want to so um, I'll make a motion um, that in the context of um, the various uh, programs through which the Public Arts Commission um, engages with the neighborhood and publics, um, we'd like to make a motion to rec uh, to recommend to, to approve to, to recommend that the meeting time for the Public Arts Commission be on the third Wednesday of every month 
at four, from 4 to 6 p.m., allowing for the public, to, public comments um, in, during evening hours. Second. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I may write up something, too, that, that sort of reiterates <clears throat> what several people said, which is that we are out in the community. Um, and, you know, among other things, um, Thursday nights are the free night at the museum, mm. paid for by the city of Palm Springs. And, and we're there a lot. And we, we are there, but if we're stuck here from six to eight, you know, um, having a meeting, it just doesn't really. Chair, Madam Chair, we have a um, motion and a second. Mm. I believe we need a vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? <laughs> okay, and Thank you me. got down. Maybe make a note to them, too, about how many stu study, study sessions we had this year. I mean, that's a really good. Like our meetings, plus we had a right. lot and of we study do go sessions. Out, um, because it, it's, it's, it suits what we're trying to do, to get out where the people are, as opposed to expecting them all to come here. OK, um, the last, <coughs> excuse me. The last part of the agenda is, <coughs> excuse me, any other commissioner comments? Um, um, I have a request. Um, I was just wondering about the status of the Gerald Clark contract and if the countersigned contract has been returned to him as he will be ordering the signs when that is received. <clears throat> the fully executed contract was well the contract was fully executed today is my understanding oh, so he will get his copy and um, payment uh, is being processed so uh, I think we would anticipate payment by next Thursday oh that's great he that's just he, he he just wanted to order once he received the countersign <clears throat> contract and um, okay. so that's great I will and let him know what did we decide if, um, he would get as the first payment and then or was it the whole thing in this case, I don't recall. <clears throat> He's okay. It might have been He's okay. That whatever okay. it is is great. Okay. And it, on that note, I'd like to um, invite all of us here to attend Gerald's opening at the museum on Friday evening. I believe there's a talk at 4:30 or 5, and then a, a public reception, which is with great. the artist, um, inviting everyone you know sort of involved with his work through the Public Arts Commission or elsewhere in the community um, this is okay it's from five to seven is the and I think public um, meeting. Uh, I think reception Madalena asked me if she could start publicizing our project and I thought oh. we should just wait a little oh. bit closer oh. to when they're so one follow-up with that is that the museum will actually be creating a um, uh, uh, like a flyer, a takeaway um, about the road signs as there are several that are actually installed currently in the, in the museum's lot. parking and lot. And they look great. And they look really great mm -hmm. and they're sort of unexpected and you might not see them first yeah. drive around the parking lot. So there will be a sign sort of describing that since it's outside of the museum and then there will be a note about the public art Commission's projects throughout Palm Springs with a list of the location, the That's parks. That's great. Maybe they so, could put it on the back of the card. Yes, Scott and so did this for when we did our map. Yes, there will be like a nice map and all this. So once that's that will be available fairly, soon, you know, for the opening. So once we have great. that, I'll be sure we can get digital copies of it as well as you know, so that you can reproduce them and distribute okay. them as you see fit. And we also talked about having a, a program or two in parks, um, bird singing, whatever. Um, and then we do need to do something for the murals at the cultural center, which should be done actually in the next day or two. But I think we need to um, have a dedication that ties in with something else, just so that we, we can get a good crowd there. Um, we might find out something that's going on at the cultural center that yeah. would, yeah, or simply on. do it on a. Is this market day? Exactly. Why don't we do that? That's the first Sunday of the month. Why don't we try to do it? Because or the farmers market day, which is every Saturday. Every Saturday. 
-hmm. Do you think the vintage market draws more people these days? Or? Probably the vintage market would have more of a draw. All right, what, will you talk to the Cultural Center and see if we can put something together for February, whatever it is, 3rd? What's the Sunday? Um, second. Second. February 2nd. At, you know, maybe 11 o'clock or something, and we'll just really invite everybody to come. That'd be great. And also, we need to make sure that um, <coughs> Gabby and Anne can be there. I know that yeah. Gabby works in LA. LA. Yeah. But Sundays might be a good time anyway for her. Yeah, and the other, the other Saturdays in February are also probably good just because of the activity in the city and Modernism Week. Yeah, the farmers markets are yeah, fairly I think Saturday busy. is a day that Gabby actually has work in oh, okay. But I'll check with her and Anne and see what their availability would be. Okay. Madam Chair, are we going around? Yep. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> um, the comment was made in our meeting today that the pictures on our website uh, are unacceptable. Uh, that's, that's on the not city a, website. On the city's website. It's unacceptable. Uh, that, that's not a quote. Um, <laughs> but uh, for as long as I've been um, a commissioner, I've heard that, I think, every year. Um, and in some instances, I feel like as a photographer, uh, the LeBron James sitting on the bench. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, we tend to use, not to take away from anybody, the good old boy network when it comes to taking pictures. Uh, but something needs to be done about that. And I'd like to offer my services or if we can just get it done. That would be great. Uh, that, would be, um, uh, that would be great. We, we are asking um, the Art co Collective to take a good picture as they finish cleaning each one, but that's about, you know, half the collection. So maybe we could sit we down. We did ask Madalena to do it. We did, and this I don't know. Summer. But but again, her pictures are mostly, um, you know, the quality that you need for like Instagram, not necessarily, you know, good enough to print or use or. Um, so it's something to think about. Yes. Well, thank you. And Discuss. I think, why don't we come up, sort of come up with a proposal for sure. what would, you know, I mean, there are 70 pieces of art on our list, and I defy anyone to, you know, know where they all are. Mm -hmm. um, and and I'm, sure, I'm sure the museum catalogs their art. You know, maybe there's someone that, you know. But. Well, we are negotiating with the airport to get in there and clean the art that belongs to the city and to the museum. There's a number of pieces on loan. Um, each of these things has its own. Um, <laughs> but, but we need better pictures. <coughs> we do. Yeah. We're an art commission. Yeah, so just on that note, we've talked in past meetings about documenting the art pieces and making them accessible, interactive for local people, non-local people, all that sort of thing. So we had, I think, one brief presentation from Mike Costanza, does the virtual reality 3D things. I met with him mm -hmm. yesterday so I could experience for the first time the yeah, with 3D the... thing, which is pretty unique and marvelous. So I'm wondering if that's something we want to move forward with, um, having Mike do a presentation at an upcoming meeting. And then there was also the artist, videographer, who did the film on the Ryan Campbell mural with the drone who does, and I can't remember what specifically he calls it, where it actually takes you into where the installation is, so you are experiencing it as if you are there. So do we as a commission want to proceed with finding whoever the person is going to be that does that for us, that puts it out in the universe? Um, maybe what we need to do is um, when we said we wanted to maintain the art better, mm -hmm. we put together a list to start with, and unfortunately the city kind of ran with it as the whole project, but they put together an RFP that, that met all of their requirements. Um, and if we say that we would like to commission some sort of photographic or video 
um, overview of the collection, mm -hmm. um, they would handle the the proposals. But what they did was, luckily, in the case of um, the maintenance one, they made they did ask a member of the commission, and happened to be Melanie, to be part of the selection committee. But it, you know, especially the main maintenance part. But mm -hmm. the only way to do something like this is to meet the city guidelines for, you know, competitive price and also um, insurance and all the things that that you need. So I'm, I'm a little bit wary about us using funds to take really cool pictures or virtual reality videos of artworks when we don't have a clear or robust platform to put it, it on. I mean, if we can't even take down a Facebook page, I really think we should pause on engaging with these kinds of projects because I think we'll get some cool stuff, but then where can it live? And I just, I feel like I would rather us see us create this this good website for input from mm -hmm. the public and, you know, do our best to work with more standard um, documentary mm -hmm. forms. Okay. I'm sorry to be a little bit of a... Right. Oh, but no, but rather, it's put it more on to the, table yeah. it, I guess, mm -hmm. to, yeah. like, maybe reassess it, like, yeah, in the next year, yeah. you know, next fall or something and say, oh, the website's grown in this way now that we, you know, or something mm -hmm. like that. I guess I just... I, no, I, would I actually rather totally that. agree yeah. with that because it's just something that we have discussed in, over the past few months. And Mike had come to one of the meetings I didn't know of at this point because we are increasing our social media um, or so much that are we sort of, like, negating the need for this right now? And it's certainly... Maybe. The problem with the... Um, Maybe the restoration kind of has negated the need in mm -hmm. a way because we kind of have to finish that project, I would think. The, the trouble with the virtual reality thing is that, you know, it's pretty hard for a presentation in a meeting unless everybody has right. the goggles. Yeah, the one component of Mike's presentation with him, at, with him yesterday that they make these little cardboard viewers that are so inexpensive that if we were doing an event, we could possibly consider having Mike do a specific one for that thing if we were celebrating an art installation. Because these things, we could do them as giveaways because it costs like a couple of dollars a piece and they could be branded with the Art Coalition or Arts Commission yeah. branding. Okay. But well, it's something to consider in the future. Yeah, I think, I, I think Mara's right that you know, we're, we're finally getting the basics done. Yeah. Um, yeah but I think to Al's point, first. we yeah. do need at least a good photograph. Of, we, how many years have we been saying this? Of, of pieces, and there are a number of pieces that happened since the last time anybody took a photograph. Even if the ones on, yeah. on the website are okay, there's a dozen mm -hmm. missing, so. But yeah, but certainly tying in with the restoration of them, that's the optimal time to have the photographs done. And the, like the sped up um, videos are a lot of fun, you know, where they just, clean the whole thing double time. That's fun. Anybody else want to put something on the... Can I ask a question about the the car installation? Uh, I, um, like an update look, on that? Um, we are still awaiting structural... Or the, the museum's staff is awaiting the full structural like engineering plans right. of this like updated the, the garage and like in, incorporating what's been done because the only plans they have are from when there was like land there so so we're waiting that my understanding is the car itself has arrived right. in Palm Springs exactly. wow. and is and is waiting so you know everything's on hold the um, city's been really great at sort of checking in to see the okay. progress we're just awaiting these plans. But so I, and I, I wrote a note to um, Lewis this morning and said, you know, do we need another engineer? I mean, is this something that's turning out not to be the right person? Because it is, the whole thing can just, we've appropriated the money, the, the council has said fine, and we just, you know, we need a blueprint for what to do. So, 
but I, now that it's here, that might speed things up. Yeah. So just on, one note, on that note, originally when we met with John Morse, um, it was kind of before the car installation got really approved. So um, maybe I just, maybe we'll share it with everybody. So the, his presentation, so just think about it. Where's his good photo of it? I think there's a, a better rendering of it, but we had asked him to come up with a proposal um, for his color spectrum that was kind of going kitty corner across that space. But if the car is going to be installed there, I think it's way too much. But I, I did find out that the Walker Guest House is, is going to be auctioned off during Modernism Week um, on the Saturday or whatever of Modernism Week. And that they have agreed with Michael Braun that they will have it out of there and the, the pit cleaned up there because it apparently does have a foundation and everything by the end of February, uh, by the end of March. Um, and it may be, I, I actually, he's on my list of people to call and find out if he has something else in mind for the pit and that's why he wants to know when it's leaving. So we'll t I'll try to find that out because we talked about putting this in the pit. Right. And it, I mean, it could be, if the house goes away, that leaves the whole other end of the pit. Um, so we need to find out what mm -hmm. they're doing. Um, and the, um, the graffiti park, I also was told that the city is, going to, is trying to have Michael Braun put a um, wrought iron fence around it. They, they think people should not be walking on it, but they want people to be able to see it. But I've noticed that there's some graffiti that was not done by our artists. Is that? That's a graffiti park. <laughs> people are adding their graffiti to the graffiti park. Um, I've been over there recently. I haven't noticed any additional. I hope the graffiti squad hasn't. <laughs> hasn't done their own graffiti? Yeah. <laughs> Or taking oh. some out, I don't know. I'll, ch I'll check it out tomorrow. Okay. And, see. and if you find them, the artist, graffiti artist, get them to register. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Seriously. that's easy. Oh, yeah, certainly we'll have Pete organize that. Get them to yeah. register. Yeah, that's good. All right, no other comments? Okay. Um, so, may I have a motion to adjourn um, with the correction that we will adjourn to our next regular meeting at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, February 19th. I will make a motion that the Public Arts Commission will adjourn to our regular meeting at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, February 19th at Palm Springs City Hall, large conference room, um, 320 <laughs> East Stockwoods Canyon Way. I'll second. Very good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are adjourned, and I think that we should um, publicize the new time. I'm not sure we did an adequate job of um, publicizing 3 p.m., but we... Um, oh, did we have people want to talk? No. You gentlemen? No, but oh. I, some people, I mean, I got some emails from people because it was a little confusing, like what time, what oh. day, because we had just just moved it so oh.